In the shadow of Queensland's second tallest peak, Mount Bellenden Kerr, crystal clear streams begin their journey to the Great Barrier Reef Lagoon. This is the heart of one of Queensland's wettest and most environmentally sensitive cane growing districts. And it's the place that Babinda District cane farmer Angle Mustafa calls home. An 88 hectare property that, in a decent year, produces around 8,500 tonnes of sugar cane. A lifelong cane farmer and a long-serving local government representative, Angle sees his role nowadays very much as a land manager and environmentalist. He's working closely with the team at Cane Growers Cairns District, including Smart Cane BMP facilitator Sandra Henrich, to achieve the highest environmental standards. Right next to us we've got one of our mountain streams, we call it Junction Creek, and it eventually flows into the National Park and eventually out to the Russell River and winds its way out to the Pacific Ocean. But as you take a look at it, it's amazing. Even though there's farmers on both sides, or cane farms on both sides of the creek, have a look at that water, it's just crystal clear. So we're certainly environmentalists. Us farmers, we care about it. Otherwise, we wouldn't grow the crops on the land if we didn't take care of it. It's his considered and caring approach to natural resource management that has seen Angle become an eager participant in the Reef Rescue Program, or as it's now known, the Australian Government Reef Program. Three initiatives partly funded by these reef programs are in operation on his farm. Each is directly tied to the program objectives of reducing threats posed to the World Heritage listed Great Barrier Reef by nutrient, pesticide and sediment runoff. Why uh, we're pleased with the Reef Rescue, because the way the cost of production are now, and to upgrade our machinery, it's almost impossible. But with the assistance with Reef Rescue, even the machine behind us, you know, that helped us with half of it so we can do what the environment wants. Angle's triple row fertiliser box and stool splitter is an example of how boosting productivity and environmental benefits go hand in hand. It's a capital investment that would have been difficult to achieve without assistance. And the program's allowing farmers to keep in step with best management practices that benefit the environment. Built at a cost of $50,000 in a 50-50 funding arrangement with Reef Rescue, Angle's machine allows for subsurface application of nutrients, putting them where they're needed most, around the sugarcane's roots. Subsurface application also reduces the loss of fertiliser through volatilisation. That's where nitrogen degrades into a gas and floats away. And it also prevents any excess nutrients washing into the Russell River catchment. There we have this big, big culture in the front. That cuts into the centre of the stool. It goes down a fair bit underground. And this at the back completely throws the soil back in that that may have shifted out, it throws it back in and when you look at it you cannot see any fertiliser so we've got 100% application where we need it. Before the reef rescue we used to uh, drop it on top and you always had to make sure that the cane was tall enough, the leaves were high enough that you didn't lose it in the atmosphere but now with the still splitter we can go in or a month earlier and just straight into the still and it's underground and we know we're not going to lose it. And by getting it in earlier, it's much better here in the wet industry that we get it in early and get it away before the wet season comes. Thank you, Reef Rescue. It's not just an annual rainfall in the range of four metres that presents challenges in this cane growing district. Farming in the shadow of Queensland's two tallest mountains means fewer hours of sunlight. That's a significant hurdle in the yearly race to get freshly cut ratoons established before the onset of the wet season. It's called for an innovative approach. Angle rakes the trash straight after harvest so the stools can catch the warmth of the sun. At the same time, weed growth between the rows is limited by that increased volume of trash. What we do here because of our low sunlight area, because of our high mountains as you see, straight after harvesting, we follow the harvest and rake the trash off our stool. And when you look behind us, you see how the ratoons are up and away because they like, that's what sunlight's around, they like to grab it. Now, if there's a problem, some might say, oh, but you've got grass might come through. We pre-emerge straight after we rake the trash off next day. And if you have a look up behind me, it talks for itself. You know, there's no grass through because we pre-emerge straight after we rake the trash off. 
With the help of Reef Rescue, weed control is being undertaken using a best management practice approach that ensures the impact of herbicide on the surrounding environment is minimised. A banded spray rig that has reduced the amount of herbicide needed while applying it in a more targeted manner is used. It means spraying can be limited to one pass and the interrow spacing can be left alone with the trash blanket limiting weed growth. Well, we find by band spraying it's more cost effective because we're not we're taking advantage of the trash that we leave in the middle, so we're not spraying in there in the first round. Like we probably do about two or three rounds of spraying before it's out of hand. But when we do the first one, it's just straight over the stool and the trash looks after the rest. So by band spraying, we're cost effective. We've got now air inducted jets which stops wind drift. And that's a big plus because if we're anywhere near creek beds, drains and that, we don't lose it. We don't spray the environment. We're straight into the fields of, of our occupation. So that's what we do. And we're grateful to Reef Rescue for allowing us to do the change to move over. And the other thing that's helpful too, this pre-mixing tank, previously we had to climb up on top where there's a danger of spillage onto our clothes and ourselves. So now we put this at ground level, pre-mix it in there and up there. So we're moving with the times. The latest project to secure Australian Government Reef Program funding is a system of underground pipes to improve drainage on the farm. Water from natural springs that crop up after heavy rainfall is channelled away without taking valuable nutrients with it or eroding the soil. Now we don't want open drains all over the paddy because they're going to collapse, cause a sediment problem. We'll have to spray them to keep the grass out and we don't want to use any more chemicals that we have to. So what we do we put in these pipes. We put them in a bed of sand and then we put slots into the side of pipes like you'll see here. That lets the water out of the springs come into the sand and trickle into these slots into the main, into this pipe and that feeds it out to the main drain. So we've taken everything away from the fields or as much as we possibly can. We've cut out spraying, we've cut out collapsing of drains and then we plant over the top of it. It's a smart, innovative approach to farming that ultimately boosts productivity and provides peace of mind that benefits will flow to the Great Barrier Reef. As a committed environmentalist, Angle Mustafa wouldn't have it any other way. One thing I'm proud to say, and I think other farmers are, that 98%, if not 99% of us, are environmentalists. You know, we care about the land, we care about everything around us, Otherwise, if we destroyed it, we wouldn't be growing the crops. So we take care of it and it shows the results wherever you look.